Hi there, welcome back to the Dutch RC channel for another edition in my <laughs> RC adventures. And in this video I'll be taking a closer look at this uh, TFL Racing Pursuit uh, speedboat. Now, um, yeah, it doesn't fit in shot. That's okay though for this video because we'll be going over the assemb assembly of a boat like this. Um, this video will probably be mostly for people that haven't raced boat, boats like this. Um, it is a competition style of uh, a speedboat. And uh, yeah, if you're not familiar with how to set up a boat like this, uh, well, then this video is for you. Now, um, let's take the lid off and take a closer look inside of the boat. Okay, now that we're looking into the hull of the boat, uh, the one of the first things you see is this sticker over here, which says a warning. Please check the lubrication on your drive system before running. And um, you come across all kinds of warnings on RCs these days, but this is really an important one. Um, because the drive shaft that uh, runs out of the boat from, from here, from the motor obviously, um, should be well lubricated, otherwise it will seize on you or it will rust up um, and then uh, go bad after, uh, after a while. So uh, what I generally do is uh, remove my drive, sh drive shaft uh, after every two days or if I uh, am not going to be running the boat for, uh, for a week or so. So um, it is pretty easy to take the drive shaft off. You've got a, a big nut over here and you just uh, simply unscrew that nut. Okay, as you can probably or hopefully tell the nut that clamps down on the axle in my boat is now loose. Uh, I did it off screen because you'd only be watching my hands. And the next thing you need to do is uh, move on back to the, the back of the boat. And then, then unscrew uh, this nut and this bolt holding on to uh, the drive assembly. So I'll do that as well. There the bolt and nut are removed. Now we can simply slot out the entire uh, drive shaft that's, uh, that's at the back. There. This entire piece comes off in one piece. And now um, it's a bit hard to see probably but uh, over here there is the drive shaft itself and you can then simply pull it out. Uh, you probably need uh, pliers for that because you can't really grip onto them very well with your fingers. Um, just make sure to not clamp down on them very hard so you will uh, damage your, your shaft. Okay and then uh, obviously put some grease on the, the shaft and slot it back in. Uh, put the stinger, this part over here, back in place and uh, tighten the nick, nick back on down. Now um, I forgot to mention that the grease also prevents water coming into the hull uh, via the, the drive shaft. So that's uh, one of the purposes of that as well. Okay, I'll get uh, everything back and then we'll get to the next step. Hold on. Okay, once you've got that all assembled on back, uh, the next thing I suggest you do is take out this grub screw, uh, the little black one over here, and apply thread lock on that one. Uh, mine did not have thread lock on it, so that's uh, really a, a, a grub screw that really likes to back out on itself uh, because uh, this shaft will ov obviously be spinning at a high RPM. So uh, just uh, take it out and uh, apply some thread lock on that. Um, after that you uh, can of course put your uh, propeller onto the shaft. Um, however, at this point uh, there is another thing uh, you might want to consider doing. And that is putting your boat into a bathtub for uh, like uh, a night. Uh, just to see if there uh, are any leaks 
on uh, ready to run boats like this uh, there occasionally can be leaks uh, from the drive shaft for instance or uh, other things and um, well this is a good time to uh, see if yours has leaks that uh, need addressing so uh, that's uh, what I'll be doing I'll just leave it uh, in the bathtub uh, overnight and uh, see how much water gets into it and from where okay so with the Prop shaft greased up. We have uh, one of the more uh, annoying <laughs> parts of the build uh, done. So uh, we're on the home stretch really. The next thing we want to do is install the steering. So the servo and the link for the servo. And for that I'd suggest you uh, obviously first uh, get yourself uh, your radio and uh, receiver. Bind them up. Make a new model. For this boat in your transmitter and um, yeah then centering up that steering servo you'll be uh, using because after you've installed the servo it's hard to get to the servo arm screw so um, yeah I'm not gonna be showing you how to set up a model in your radio because your radio will probably be, be uh, a completely different one than mine so I'll do that off screen and um, yeah, and then I'll show you how to install the servo. Okay, so I've got my uh, radio gear set up for the boat now and um, I've got uh, the servo here and uh, as you've noticed I also have the steering rod already installed on the servo arm and that, that is what you want to do. Um, after you install the servo you can't uh, get the, uh, the control rod into the arm anymore. So first install the control rod onto the servo and uh, then you can go ahead and mount your servo. Now uh, that is done by feeding the control rod through the, the back of the boat, through this uh, rubber hose thing. And uh, do do that uh, gently because you don't want to damage this uh, rubber hose because that's preventing water from coming into the boat. So just uh, gently get the control rod through there okay and once you've done that also uh, feed the control rod through this uh, clevis of course now don't forget to also put thread lock on the grub screw that holds that on okay and uh, with that all said and done you can um, well in this in the case of this boat um, the servo mount um, is uh, not the kind of type you screw your servo on in. Um, it has a few grooves that uh, the servo just slots into. There, there are my servos in place. Um, yes, this does work pretty well. Um, after you've uh, zip tied your servo on down like this, it'll be very rigid in place. So this, this really works out pretty well. And uh, this uh, Pursuit boat uh, comes with a couple of uh, tie wraps. So uh, just uh, feed the tie wraps on around the servo and then uh, clamp it on down with those. That'll work out just fine. Okay, so I've got my servo installed. And um, yeah, next thing is uh, to align your rudder. Um, obviously, this is uh, best done uh, with the radio gear on, uh, so your uh, servo uh, arm won't uh, twist out on you. As you can see, I've got my radio gear on, and let's center up this servo. There, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Again, make sure you uh, put thread lock on that uh, on that grub screw.
there. Now uh, the manual says you can uh, cut the axis off, but uh, to be honest there isn't a lot of axis, so I'll just keep that on. But you can, of course, if you want to make it look more <laughs> better, you can take this off. Alrighty, the turn fins. Uh, one on uh, either side of the boat, of course, and it'll go on. They will go on like so. Now they are fully adjustable. You can change the angle, as you might have noticed, and they are uh, simply held on with one screw. Um, do not forget to put a thread lock on that screw. By the way, um, the boat will be able to run if you would lose a a, a turn fin like this, but. Uh, well, I, I can't imagine why you would want to, so just put some uh, thread lock on that screw. Now, um, I put them on so you can see what that looks like. Okay, the turn fin is on. As you can see, I haven't tightened it down yet. Um, yeah, you can, uh, as you can see, change the angle of the turn fin and you can move it up and down. Um, now, ideally, you want to set up the stern fins so that if the boat is uh, running in a straight line, uh, they don't or hardly hit the water uh, because they will act as uh, brakes. Um, so, and uh, once you corner the boat, then they they will engage the water. So, well, that takes a bit of tuning and a few runs to see what the exact angle should be. Um, for a first run, just put them uh, like uh, sort of uh, in the middle and I'll have them uh, at uh, 90 degrees down on the first run, run and then just see uh, how that, what that looks like. Uh, pretty simple. Um, the angle will also affect how the boat corners. Yeah, just uh, play around with that uh, a little, uh, do a few runs with them uh, straight down and uh, in a <coughs> the second run um, angle them uh, up a bit and just see what the difference uh, is uh, to the, the ride of the boat. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, once again, uh, they will have a bit of drag, so they will... Uh, lower the end speed of the boat a little so you want to have them as little in the water as possible Alrighty, the last thing we'll have a look at here is um, The trim tabs uh, this boat comes with uh, four adjustable trim tabs as you can see um, They were already installed uh, When I got the boat so there's no installing them um, What you do need to know is uh, how to set them up for a first run. Um, like I said, they are adjustable, so you can, uh, with these screws over here, adjust the angle of the trim tabs. And uh, let me flip the boat over so we can uh, have a look at them from the bottom of the boat. Well, um, with the trim tabs, uh, it's basically the same story as with the turn fins. Um, I just try a few angles and I would start out with them have being exactly level with the bottom of the boat. So just put a ruler over them like so and looks like mine are angled up slightly, just uh, just a little bit. So I'll uh, angle them a little more down for the first run. And um, yeah, if you want to know what difference it makes to the performance of your boat if you have them uh, further down or up, just try it. Simple. Uh, take uh, a few Allen keys uh, to uh, to the pond you're running the boat, and uh, do a few runs uh, with them level, and uh, turn them uh, a few degrees up and down, and just see what happens. Uh, I might uh, go over tuning of these boats um, in another video, but this video is just meant to uh, give you a basic uh, understanding of how to set them up. Okay, and that is basically it for this video. Um, obviously I will now have to uh, install uh, a battery and uh, configure the ESC. Um, in the case of this pursuit the ESC comes with an excellent uh, manual. 
So um, yeah, for this boat I won't have to tell you anything. If you do uh, run into questions or problems, uh, don't hesitate to ask of course. Um, let's see, yeah, one thing I will also be changing is, um, as you can see here, uh, the water cooling system runs a hose from the cooling jacket to the cooling motor mount. Um, I will simply route a hose from this output port towards the side of the boat. I'll discard of the cooling feature of the motor mount. But that's uh, you can opt to use the system as is. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's up to you, of course. Um, yeah, once again, I hope this was uh, informative for you. If you are left with questions. Uh, don't hes hesitate to ask and uh, I hope to be able to show you how the boat runs in the near future. For now, thanks for watching and hope to see you back in another video. Bye bye!